Good day, everyone. My name is uh, Frank Dalton. I'm a uh, gentleman who's uh, had some wonderful life experiences. And I'm the eldest of six boys and one girl in my little family. And uh, the girl was the last. And that was the crowning glory of this group. And uh, so we all had to adapt <laughs> after some rough and tumble times. I've been a practicing Catholic all my life. And uh, that's due to my wonderful parents, Terry and Dorothy, but they're not here anymore. But they left me with a legacy of, of, of good Catholic practices. And those were things that I uh, loved to have and loved to practice when I was a little child. And uh, that kept up until I was in high school. And then when I was in high school, I was at uh, Catholic high school, uh, one run by the Brazilians. And that was a wonderful experience because these darling priests that taught us all had master's degrees and PhDs. And so they were well versed in the faith. And of course, I had that wonderful thing called the Baltimore Catechism, which really helped cement knowledge and what was going on in our lives. That was uh, my beginnings. And uh, it wasn't until I got to university that sometimes things slipped away. And what slipped away mostly was the morality of it all. Morality during high school was really wonderful, and then university morality was something else. But nonetheless, I attended church all the time and did all of those wonderful things. And uh, so I kept my faith going, but it was a mixture of, is this the way to go? Or what was the excitement of it all? Uh, the association with uh, women was very, uh, very interesting. I never did want a deep relationship with anybody because uh, that would mean that I had to be committed. And so um, commitment then, uh, it kind of scared me at the time. And, uh, but that was all right. Well, it was the... Uh, Interesting, the women in my life, uh, because they taught me what was true and what was to be essential in a life of grace. Even though they may have not been thinking that way, but I was thinking that way. It was the women that taught me uh, all the things that were important. Their virtues, their tenderness, their patience, their their capacity for uh, listening, the adherence to set ways of doing things. So they were wonderful uh, ways and means in which I could learn. And my mother in particular, when she made a transition herself to really seeing God in life, it was through her tears that life changed me. I made fun of her. I mocked her. In her, in her faith. And then she cried in front of me. So through the, through the tears of my mother, and I can't help but reflect that these tears of my mother would have been the tears of Mother Mary at the same time, saying, oh, my darling son, and God the Father, of course, he'd be thinking the same way. What's wrong with this guy? Anyway, so those were the transitional things for me uh, that really transposed my life because they were images of what was appropriate and what was good. So what have I done? What am I doing now? I tell you, uh, with those models in life, um, I began a venture called the Apostolate of Holy Motherhood. And, uh, and all of that taught me that if I imitate the mother 
And if I imitate Joseph, and if I imitate those people in my life, I will be living the sanctified life. And that, for me, became my models of how to do things, what to do, what to say. And so now what I do is I say, I want to ask, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? What would Mary do? What would Mary say? How would she say it? What would she do as a follow-up? What kind of activities would she have to be able to do these things? To, to make oneself holy, because that's where I want to go. I want to go to heaven, but I'm not going to get to heaven unless I'm holy. So it was through those examples that I was able to make the transition, was able to make myself holy. And so when I think of my friends and my colleagues and my family, I try to let them know that this isn't impossible. It takes work. It takes practice to practice the virtues, to practice the things that you need to do to get to heaven. So I encourage anybody who wants to make the transition to decisively do it, to consider what needs to be done, point it out to yourself, and then work at it. So that's what I do now. Thank you, Frank, for this uh, very touching and personal story of uh, how you came to deepen that faith. And um, uh, a verse of uh, Psalm 103 came to me, and it was, For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear Him and His righteousness to children's children, to those who keep His covenant and remember to do His commandments. And on this, I just want to bless you. Uh, I, I bless you in the name of a Father of Jesus. He is your Father. He created you and adopted you as His child. He loves you unfailingly, and His smiling face shines on you to give you His mercy and peace. I bless you in the name of Jesus, your Lord, your Savior, your Shepherd, and your best friend. He chose to make His home with His Father in you. And I bless you in the name of the Holy Spirit, who lives in your heart, who gives you eternal life, divine life, inspiration, um, action de, that you would not know where it's coming from, that those inspiration and which sanctifies you, transforms you and makes you like Jesus. I bless you with all charisms, more of uh, the inspiration that the Lord is actually giving you and more of his love and hope. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.